All right, we got a weasel. We have a weasel as tribute. So, let us go back. New game. Game mode. Familiar characters mode. The leader of this shall be one weasel. There we go. And anyone else getting in on that? Or we shall have a random buddy for weasel to start with. Like a random free one of us buddies. Going once. Going twice. Weasel is traveling to Canada with Delilah. All right. Actually, who's here? Who's here? Let's 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 make it someone who's here. Is Delilah here? Is Miss Winston Delilah? I recognize everyone but Miss Winston. Delilah, if you're here, speak up. Delilah is Kyrie. All right, moving again. We're going to go... That's me. Grimbone. Weasel. Phantom. All right, Gil. Gil is the other rando. Let us take this quest onward to Canada. Uh... Do that. We're going to do this. Cool. Let's go. So, you guys are going to help me make decisions. Here's our little intro. Weasel hears rumors that Canada is a safe place, free of the threat of zombies. With nothing to gain from waiting around in Florida, he decides to brave the death road and travel north. All right, so this is basically a, a roguelike game where we... Uh, random stuff happens and we're trying to get to Canada. We have to drive for so many days before we get there. And we have to manage our resources, our morale, our fuel, our food, and, you know, not die to zombies. Uh, there's going to be two different stages to this game. There's going to be the driving intermissions, uh, where we do these random events where we pick options. And then there's going to be the actual stages where we go looting or interacting and moving around. So, let us hit the road. It is entirely possible we will die very quickly. To start the journey, the group decides to grab some supplies from a nearby location. In order to survive the death road, you'll need to hoard as many supplies as you can. You will also need to find ways to train and grow your team. All right, so let's let's take a look at our team real quick. So some of the stats are randomized. So, okay, Weasel here. Weasel, um, so you can see on the screen, we've got all these different stats. Some of them are hidden, which means the character we're playing as, we haven't had a chance to actually test that. We don't actually know how good they are at it yet. Some of them are revealed. The smileier the face, the better they are. So Weagle's wit, uh, Weasel's wits are actually the worst. So good job, Weasel. But he's got a real good attitude. So that, that's good. And we start with a neutral morale. He's got some traits there. He's got oblivious, which means what you think it means. Um, he's got... Apparently good at healthcare, he's holding a mop, and he's covered in dirt, which means nothing, that's just flavor text. Gil, Gil is like literally the opposite of Weasel, that's hilarious. Uh, he's got awesome wits, terrible attitude. Absolutely terrible attitude. Uh, he's paranoid, he's a fighter, he starts with a hatchet, and he claims to know an ancient anti-zombie martial art. <laughs> Alright, we got our little car here. We gotta drive 15 days to Canada. Um, Alright, where do you guys want to go? This is, uh, this is full audience interaction. We got a Yalmart, we got a quiet hotel, and we have a quiet factory. I'll say right off the bat, the factory is probably uh, the like least useful place to go out, off the bat. We should definitely... Okay, Yalmart it is. I'm going to take the first thing that comes up in chat whenever I ask. The group spots an abandoned Yalmart off in the distance. It looks like it's been looted, but maybe there's some untouched loot inside. My zombie forecast is mild swarm size, sluggish, and it's late in the morning. Let's go bargain hunting. So here's our little equip screen. We got two flashlights. Gil's got his uh, hatchet and Weasel has his mop. We're going to try to change that pretty soon. I'm going to be playing Weasel since he's the party leader, but we can't change that as we go. All right. Here's our car. Let's boogie. All right. Come on, Gil. Don't, don't waste time. So we're gonna we're gonna get into this Yalmart. So the zombies are sluggish, which means they're not really paying attention to us. So we can kinda we can kinda do this. Get some ammo. We what we really want to find here. Oh, oh, they seen us kill. Kill please. Uh we want to get rid of our mop. There we go. Hammer. And we want to find some 
food. Food is the biggest thing. So if we run out of food, everyone morale goes to basically zero, and that sucks. If gas goes to zero, we have to abandon the car. There we go. So take some poop right out of the toilet, throw that in the car, good as gas. What do we got here? Oh, okay. Got some food, some medicine, zombie. So the way weapons work in this game is uh, the amount, the speed that it takes you to swing a weapon is based on your fitness and how fast you get tired is based on your strength. See how Gil is like sweating already from using that axe? Yeah. So he probably has a pretty low strength. That's all we're going to get from here. We're going to get back in our car. Turn on the car and away we go. And if you're looking at the top left and you see the time that looks all blurry, that's meant to be that way. It's a game effect. All right, there's our mission summary. Moving onwards. The group goes against their judgment and camps in a city apartment because there's no zombies around. When they wake up, the building is on fire. All right, we've got two options. We've got run out now and guilt and locks is cool about fire safety. So depending on player stats, we will get character-specific options sometimes. Uh, they may be good, they may be bad. We're going to trust Gil? All right, Weasel says we trust Gil. Gil and Locks always has a fire safety plan prepared. It doesn't matter where he is. Gil and Locks constantly thinks of new fire safety plans. All supplies were saved. No one was injured. Morale increases. We eat a good meal. Hey, good job, Gil. He is the final fire, because the last fire that will exist on the planet is him lighting himself on fire. Uh, the group drives into a city as it starts to get dark. Trying not to lose track of time, things can get bad after sunsets. Alright, sparse, sluggish, this is very easy. It's near sunset, though. So, let's uh, kind of be quick. We can go to the gun shop or the pharmacy. Guys, gun shop or pharmacy. What's the plan? Pharmacy. All right, time to go to the pharmacy. Uh, oops, we don't need your mop anymore. Sorry, Weasel, I know you're attached to that mop. Gil can still have his hammer. And let's go. Oh, I probably should have taken like a flashlight. Okay, let's find the pharmacy. It's just a house. That's not the pharmacy. That's the edge of the map. I really should have got a flashlight. Where's the pharmacy? Pharmacy? Here we go. Small grins. Okay, good. Health pack. So obviously, health packs let us heal when we take damage. The way uh, damage works in this game is when zombies... Uh, when you move near a zombie, you'll see these little like, exclamation points and question marks. That's all that was in here. That was kind of crap. Um... Basically, zombies don't attack per se. They kind of like do this damage over timey thing where, um, what's this? Baseball bat. What is even that? Is that a door? Or it's a chair? Um, they'll basically grab at you. It'll slow your movement and put these little exclamation points, um, around you. Red exclamation points. If you are stay in that exclamation point zone for too long. Is this a pipe bomb? Oh god, it is. Well, rip that one guy. Um, kind of pipe bomb. If you stay in the exclamation point zone too long, you take a damage. Hello, hello! Dez, welcome. Let the fun begin. If we die, we'll go insert you into the list of possible... Possible associates. Okay, we got some food here. Food is good. We're gonna throw this garbage can at this zombie. Ha! Ah! Good job, Weasel. Weasel and Gil going to work. And I think it's getting a little dark, so I want to leave. Um, if it gets too dark, zombies start getting. Okay, Des has volunteered as tribute. Okay, peace out. Let's go. All right, there we go. Seems good. Everyone's happy. We got some stuff. Hey, canned food is a lot better when you're able to heat it up. So you'll notice that uh, when we do some of these, 
uh, after this screen, after we pick something, if stats happen, you'll see it'll go back to the car driving window and like a bunch of text will start flying by. That's just repeating the same stuff that it tells us here. So don't worry about trying to read all the text that like washes off past the screen really fast. Anyway, a bee flies into the car. Even with the window open, it doesn't leave. It keeps flying right into the group's faces. This could be the biggest challenge yet. We're gonna... I I'm seeing vote for ignore the bee. All right. Weasel completely ignores the bee. It somehow he somehow didn't notice it. Hilton Locks follows his example and also ignores the bee. The bee is still buzzing around the car months after it is abandoned. <laughs> Amazing. Poor bee. All right. And if you look in the background, you'll notice it slowly changes from Florida to Canada. Uh, the group camps for the night off a quiet stretch of the road. The group eats a decent meal. In the morning, there's a moose outside the camp. It looks injured and is just glaring at the group. Even injured, a moose is a really powerful creature. Probably best not to mess with it. Alright, guys. Weasel can try to treat its injury. Or Gil can wrestle or shoot the moose. Or we could just leave it be. I feel like leaving it be is not on the table. <laughs> Anti-zombie martial art. You're wrestling it. You're gonna, you're gonna try to... Anti anti zombie, this alive moose. All right, we're wrestling the moose. Here we go. Oh, Gildan Locks wrestles the moose. Arms lock with hooves and a test of strength and willpower. He doesn't win. In a blatant disregard for wrestling rules, the moose crushes him with its hooves. You took a lot of damage. Okay, so we learned your strength here. You are not very strong. Thank you, moose, for teaching us this valuable lesson. And you are on death's door. We should ditch the car and find a big zombie to ride on. Alright. Weasel healed you up. That's good. The group can't find the car keys. After a while, they spot the keys lying inside a gator's open mouth. <laughs> After most humans disappeared, alligators started spreading across the entire east coast. It's rumored the gators may eat zombies and car keys. Alright. Are, are, are you gonna... Are we gonna go double or nothing? Dub, double uh, your loss... <laughs> so you gotta say it you gotta say it is Gil gonna wrestle the gator is Weasel gonna tire out the gator is Weasel just gonna grab the keys or are we abandoning our car what's the plan guys wrestle alright <laughs> Gil go Gilton Locks wrestles the gator for the keys the gator is bested by Gilton Locks' raw strength and spits out the keys <laughs> This was probably a zombie gator. We just didn't know. The zombie martial art worked this time. <laughs> Florida Gill. <laughs> well, you got a strength boost, see? Now now we gotta go for round two with that moose. And hey, Weasel healed you back up to full from the moose attack. We're doing good. Outside of Canada, most of society and civilization has been destroyed. You can still find people engaging in trade with preserved food being the new curtains currency you have 10 food left the group runs into a trading camp let's go oh oh hello and harris is hanging around the camp she's been waiting for you to show up all right we got and harris so and harris if you're watching i apologize you told me that you were hyper and the only trait that had anything that was sort of like hyper was irritating so i didn't put that because i think you're irritating i put that because it was the best thing to mimic hyper i apologize all right and Herod, welcome to the team um this guy what do we got here what do we got here who are you Group sees a woman standing near a stockpile of crates. The crates seem to contain a large amount of food. I got food. I'm looking for weapons. Okay. She can buy our weapons for food. Oh, sweet. We found... Okay. This is this is George A. Romero. Like, of Dawn of the Dead fame. Uh, so... Uh, you meet an older man who seems to radiate kindness. The group talks to him for a while about nothing in particular. It's a pleasant conversation. Our morale increases. All right. We can get some good advice... Or a few decent weapons. Some good advice. Alright. A little bit of advice can go a long way. 
yeah. He he's a very rare find. He just like ultra jacks all our stats. All right. We are now we are now zombie strong. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, George. Also, this poodle. The group finds a dog surrounded by a bunch of ammo. The dog speaks. Welcome to the ammo emporium. Everything must go. And he's offering us ammo. No, no thanks, dog. Although I appreciate you. Feel the pump. Uh, it's an old but fit man in a matching gray sweatpants and sweatshirt. He screams something about building mass and bulk with an intense strength routine. He flails towards some heavy objects lying around. <laughs> These options. We could buy training, and Herod can say, say it, don't spray it, and Guilt and Locks can declare a pose off. Alright, we're saying it, don't spray it. And Herod quips, say it, don't spray it, to the strength trainer. He doesn't take this well. Get out of here, you dweebus. You don't deserve to get huge. He continues yelling until the group <laughs> leaves the training tail. And Herod's strength is revealed. Mediocre. Well, great. <laughs> oh, banter. Nice. Whoa, it's Moss. It's nice to see a familiar face. He was trying... He was found trying to pull open a door that said push on it. Alright, well, come on, Moss. Let's go! We got we got a nice spectrum of peeps here. The city is covered with hordes of undead and wreckage that has been touched uh, that has been touched by a previous fire. The group gets surrounded and their only chance is sprinting through the sewers. Uh, they are hunting. It is late night. Uh, okay, so, we've got a lot more peeps now. We are going to... Inherit... What? Inherit has an ore? Okay. Moss has a frying pan. Okay, let's give Moss a bat. This frying pan probably sucks. Uh, we're still gonna be Weasel. Weasel, you're gonna get a flashlight. Alright. Hey, them bits. I can't see the bits dry. Hopefully they fell inside. Alright, let's go. They got our flashlight. Go! So we're just trying to escape. We are just trying to escape. So we're gonna we're gonna let you guys save us. And hopefully. Hopefully we don't get surrounded. Uh, when in doubt, left is right. I don't even know where the end is. We're just gonna go. Yeah, those question marks and exclamation points. If if you see too many of those on one character, uh, in the same amount of time, then you risk taking damage. There are two exits here. All right, cool. That was nice and easy. We did it. We're doing good. These roads are awful. Cars don't last long on them. Thanks, Moss. The group feels inspired after managing to survive that situation. They feel like they're getting the hang of this. We get a reward. Okay, hold on. Let's look at our... Our morale is really good. So we don't need... Uh, we don't need this one. We don't really need the health heal. So we can either all get a mechanical upgrade, or Gil can get jacked. Just Gil. Like, we can take the random skill gain if we want just random skills for everyone. Thoughts? First person to post something is what we're doing. Become mechas. All right, we're taking some mech upgrade. All these cars aren't getting any less broken. Okay, so apparently our entire team is absolutely ass at fixing stuff. So now we're slightly less ass. And we got some Zombo points, which is just uh, the unlocking currency for this game. Which we can only use after runs. Next time we stop, I should show you how to make stair traps. Sounds good to me, Gil. All right, Gil, you now have to teach... And Herod how to make snare traps. The group sets up camp at the safest place they could find, an abandoned mini golf park. They eat a decent meal. In the morning, they find a golf ball and putter while searching the area. The group decides to play a quick game. Moss gets some needed exercise. <laughs> Moss's fitness increase. Moss, how out of shape are you if you're getting uh, if you're getting exercise from mini putt? If you tie a string around your finger real tight, your finger will turn purple. Why would I need to know that, Moss? Who cares? The group drives into the outskirts of a city. Zombies mill around, but they haven't seemed to notice the car yet. Alright. We're going to the lo a lost safe house. 
or a hardware store. The aggression is calm, so we should be able to loot pretty pretty thoroughly. Safe house! Alright. We haven't really found anything new. No one picked up anything weird. Uh, we don't need our flashlight. Let's go! Alright. Team Weasel. So... Safe house. Find the safe house first. Whatever. We're going in here first. Food, 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 gas. I like calm zombies. There's nothing in here. <laughs> and haired with that or. Get some food in here. Get that armoire on the way back. Hey, a broom closet. Nice. Some shotgun ammo. This chair in the middle of a weird intersection. Food. Bullets. Okay. This is a pretty big house. Come on, team. Follow your boy, Weasel. Okay, let's actually find the safe house. The safe house should have a sign on it saying, like, safe house. Yeah, there. There we go. Alright. There is a lot of zombies here. There is a lot of zombies here. Uh, looks like that's been looted. Oh, yeah. So the one thing we do need to watch out for is everyone getting tired because every time we do swing these weapons you can see moss and gill are a little tired uh, and that's just going to reduce their stats further so we can't just like stand in a bottleneck and like kill forever there's a whole lot of nothing in this oh here we go okay umbrellas are useful so if we ever get caught uh without our vehicle and it starts to rain uh that's really bad for morale but, if we have an umbrella for each person in the party, in our inventory, then, you know, we have umbrellas. So we're going to try to grab some umbrellas as we go. Oh, there we go. Okay. Fuel. Whatever that was. This zombie. Aha! We got a zombo point. Uh, throw that at him. Someone picked up that shotgun. Funny, we can probably use this bat. Oh, Gil got it. Okay, cool. Safe house seems good. Let's get out of here. Take a quick moment. These are right near our car. Take a quick sneaky peek. See if there's anything in here. So when you're playing this game, you always want to loot every toilet you find. If they are lootable. Because every 100th toilet that you loot will spawn the toilet genie and let you make a wish. Just like real life. <laughs> there was a bullet in this toilet. What, you don't, you don't, you, your parents never told you about the toilet genie? That's like classic, classic Floridian folklore. Right up there with Florida Man. <laughs> you choose to believe that somebody pooped a bullet? I, I can confirm that. That is exactly what happened. It was me. I was here. I pooped the bullet. Get out of here. Alright, so we guys, we have to decide now... If we're gonna, if we find someone else that we recognize, are we are we cycling the team, or are we gonna keep this team until someone dies and and say no to anyone new? Feel I feel like if you're here in chat, like maybe we'll replace Moss if Moss isn't here. All right, we did a good job. Let's boogie. I say people who are here will trump people who are not here, and that'll that'll be how we do it. 
Alright, back on the road. Everyone's super happy. Rain starts pouring down. It's hard to see. The shapes of zombies lurk right on the edge of darkness. The group isn't sure what would be worse. Continuing or stopping here? Alright. We can keep driving. We can seek shelter in the dark house that look that we can't tell how many zombies are there. Or go down a random side road in the rain to camp. First, first come, first serve. Shelter? Alright, we're, we're going. We're going in. The group doesn't even get settled into the house before they realize a large horde is closing in from the pouring rain. Siege alert. Okay. Great. So, sieges in this game are... Uh, we're stuck on a map and we have to survive a certain amount of time um, before we're allowed to leave. And it's usually very claustrophobic. It is at night. We have to survive for an hour. Okay, so. Let's get rid of this umbrella. We have a pipe bomb. Gil picked up a pistol. I mean... Here, Gil, you're gonna use the bat, because you've proven that you're not strong enough to hold this axe. Do we have anyone who's strong? Wait, Gil is actually... Gil is strong, he's just not very fit. Okay, you can use, you can use that still. Uh, and Herod broke her thing, so you can have a golf club. Moss has a bat. Moss also has a shotgun. When did Moss get a shotgun? Um, you know what? And Herod here. Have a shotgun. Uh, flashlight, yes. Although I don't know how much a flashlight is going to do because it's going to be... Um, because we're going to be trying to survive. Alright. Let's... Go! Oh, that's a Molotov. Okay. Uh, I'm just gonna let them clump up a little bit and then throw this pipe bomb. I hope it doesn't blow up the Molotov. No, it did not. Okay. Now we have the Molotov. That didn't actually do that much. But yeah. Okay. So walls in this game are interesting. Zombies will always move directly towards you. Um... So, the best way to take advantage of something like this is to kind of stand on one side. And Herod, and Herod's, and Herod is wielding a spine right now. Okay, this is a pretty tame siege, all things considered. We only got 15 minutes left. Oh, here they come, here they come. Okay, we'll try to get them all to the left here. Moss, get out of there. And now we're going to run down. Okay. So now we just need to get to this door, but there's a lot of zombies in the front of the door. Yes, shotgun and Herod. Go, murder, kill. All right. We got out. Our car doesn't look like it's doing very well. After a long drive, the group finds a safe place to camp. The night passes with no incidents. Nice. Whoa, it's Grimbone! It's nice to see a familiar face. He's sleeping on a picnic table right now in the open. Uh, okay, we got Grimbone. Is Grimbone here? Or is Moss here? Moss or Grimbone? If Grim is here, we get Grim. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not seeing a Grim. I'm not seeing a Grim. Grim, you have uh, five seconds to speak. Speak now or hold your peace. Neither are here. All right. That means we are going to live Grimbone behind. He will, he will come to us another day. Bye, Grim. While driving on the death road, the group decides to make a stop for supplies. All right. We can go to a dead arcade, a swarmed rest stop, a riled up house, or because I think Moss is an explorer, we can spend gas to go find different options. What do you think we should do? Team? Oh, sorry, my contact is weird. I thought it was just that. We gotta wait for the decision. 
Ninja Games! The group finds a pretty big arcade full of silent video games. Maybe if you check, one of them will be gas or battery powered. That could happen. Alright, they're irritated, so they're going to be a little more uh, aggressive than normal. Okay, we're going to store this. Um, and then we don't want to waste our ammo for non-important situations. So, look at, and, and haired with the spine. Okay, get out of here. No, no spines. And Moss, Moss broke his thing? Man. Have a frying pan, Moss. Okay. Let's go! Oh, there's a lot of stuff here. Okay. Let's bail into the washrooms for now. Any interactables? Nothing. Okay. Is anything on? Anything? There's nothing. Oh, oh. We got Smash of Ending Machine. That's something. It's not really great. Train games. This arcade is kind of shit. Hmm. Okay. We got, we got some intact vending machines that we're going to smash. Perfect. Uh, let's go right first. Ooh, ooh. It's, the game is on. Get out of here. The arcade machine seems to be working. It's not very clear how it can run without electricity. Weasel considers taking a video game break while he is guarded. Alright, Weasel. You're playing the arcade game. Weasel plays an old arcade game named Death Road to Canada. It gets really into it. Like all video games ever, playing it increases your skills with guns. The critics were right. Before Weasel knew it, two hours had passed. <laughs> uh, Weasel gets slightly better at guns from being absolutely terrible. Even, even with advice from Mr. Romero. Okay, we're gonna take some food. Moss is tired. Gil is tired. And Herod's a boss. Ooh, another, another thing. Here, okay, someone else is gonna play. Someone else will play. Who wants to play video games? And Herod is playing video games. Alright. Oh, oh. Alright. And Herod's gonna take a video game break. And Herod plays an old game called Ultra Death and gets really into it. Like all video games, play it increases your skill with guns. And Herod is also less terrible at video games. Or at guns. But also video games. Let's be in Herod for a bit. Right, I think I think that's pretty much everything in this arcade. Right? I forget how we got here. A little lost. Oh, we have not been here. See any more games? Ah, all right, Aunt Herod, it's your job to fish everything out of the toilet. Good. Green game. And Herod, please, stop breaking all your weapons. You literally have nothing now. You're just gonna end up with more spines. Alright. Away we go! We got some food and some gas. Mostly the training is what we got there. Couldn't hurt to team up with more survivors. We are literally at full party size, Weasel. The group finds a repair shop. There's a tiny bit of gas plus a lot of broken garbage. There could be something good here if you know how to fix it. Uh, pick someone to spend a day repairing junk. So we can ignore the junk. So we know that everyone is absolutely terrible at mechanical, which is the repairing stat.
So I don't think we should necessarily spend someone to spend a day repairing junk because then we lose a day, which means we lose food. Um, but if you guys want, if someone wants to try, because it is a skill check, would any one of the present players who are in this party like to volunteer themselves to spend a day repairing junk? Going once. Going twice. Gil is getting voluntold. All right. Giltenlock spends the day trying to fix something in the junk pile. He takes a broken tennis racket and turns it into a level 2 ultra ergonomic tennis racket of the whale. This is exactly the same as a regular tennis racket. <laughs> Amazing. Um, his mechanical increases though, so that's something. Level 2 ultra ergonomic tennis racket of the whale. Sometimes it seems to be worth it to run past a horde instead of fighting. Thanks, Gil. The group finds an abandoned campground with a fire pit. Gilton Locks even finds an old, somewhat stale, extra large pack of marshmallows. We eating marshmallows or telling stories? Your prediction was yes, correct. And Herod will probably get that tennis racket. Nom nom, we are nomming. The group sets up camp that eats a huge bag of marshmallows instead of dinner. There's even some left over. Nice. While driving on the death road, the group decides to make a stop for supplies. Alright, so we've got commercial row, a house rescue, a UFO landing site that is flashing like it wants us to do it, and then we can go more. And uh, apparently we're going to the UFO. While driving through the woods, the group sees a UFO amidst the trees. Wow! Watch out, there's something moving near it. Oh, it's a siege. There's no escape. Two hours. Two hours. Okay. And Herod, here's your tennis racket of the whale. You can also have your shotgun of the whale. Um... Weasel did his shooting thing, so we'll give Weasel that. We'll also give Weasel Molotov. Oh, we're gonna, sorry, we need to play Weasel. Weasel is team leader. There we go. Uh, it's late afternoon, so it's not gonna be super dark. I mean, seems good. Or do we want to give... Hold on. Who else is gun? Shooting bad. Shooting bad. Like we could, we could. Guild's got good strength. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna bank on Moss, guys. We're banking on Moss. All right, we're gonna give Moss the pistol. All right. Then Weasel will be here. Cool. Let's go. What's up? Do you like me? Aliens exist for real. You knew it. The alien is a little busy at the moment. Try talking later if it survives the siege. If it survives the siege. Who is this? He's an expressionless man in a black suit. There are no aliens here. There is no such thing as aliens. Also, zombies do not exist. Dude, this alien is awesome. And also, that UFO is a car. Do we get the UFO car? This gun is freaking broken. We could get in. We could actually probably just steal the car. Steal the UFO. If things get bad, we're hopping in the UFO. No, don't break it! Okay, the zombies aren't actually attacking the car. Which means we could probably do this cheese where we stand on one side and all the zombies... Oh, they're trying to attack the man in black. I mean, 
Do we care about the man in black? I say we let him get eat. We're just gonna stay here. Uh, the man in black is running away and possibly dying. If he dies, his corpse will, like, attract bodies. I'm just gonna chill here with our buddy Elvis. Actually, let's get to the other side of this. Let's go right here. Everything is fine. That man in black is doing work. Go team us! Yay! We are helping. Siege is over. You can now try to escape. All right. Let's talk to him. Alien pokes Weasel with a glowing finger. His brain is filled with information about how to open slightly more complicated unlocked car doors. The alien takes this opportunity to run away. The door slides open when Weasel touches it. The alien car is impressive already. All right, alien car. Let's go. Look at our amazing alien car. The group finds a used car lot that seems untouched by time, or at least not touched by looters. They find a supply of gasoline and a few working cars. No, we're not swapping our, our literal alien car. Oh, this car is like jacked. So this is like super maxed out ultra car. All right, yeah, we are going to keep our car and drive away. You guys don't get any input on that. The group feels a sense of dread. Something dangerous is coming. The road seems like it's getting steadily more crowded with the undead, and they're getting riled up. The group runs into a trading camp. Um. Guys? Everything's on fire. Oh, everyone's... Did you kill everyone? I'm having a fire sale! Absolutely, everything must go! God damn it. I mean... We do not want to spend our food. As much as I would like this napalm launcher. We have to resist the hot deals for now. Oh! Wait! Wait! No, no, no! Stop! Abort! Let that guy get eaten. Let him die. Oh, stop, Moss. What? He clearly set everyone on fire and killed all these people. he dead? I think he's dead. Uh, well, that seems like a lot of zombies. Let's just peace out. Bye. <laughs> Wasn't the apocalypse supposed to be rad cars, leather, and way less waiting? The group camps out in a big field. The group eats a decent meal. They find a row of cans sitting on a wooden fence. We're gonna shoot the cans or we're gonna leave the camp. The group gets some shooting practice by blasting the cans. A man in red long johns runs into the field with a pitchfork. Okay. My precious antique cans! Oh, look what you've done to him! He shakes the pitchfork as he yells. Our morale went down. Can you say do or ha ha? This is the most Simpsons thing ever. Oh, doesn't do anything. Cool. 
The group runs into another car, much like their car. It's rotting, nearly totaled, and is full of skeletons! And probably a bunch of bugs and other gross things. Yet another sign that many attempt the death road to Canada and not very many make it. Also another sign that some other people found an alien. <laughs> and Herod can be philosophical. Gil can dismantle the car for parts. Moss can be philosophical. Or we can search the car for loot. Search the car. Group takes what supplies they can from the car. Ammo, ammo, food, medical. The trunk is completely stuffed with rolls of toilet paper. Unfortunately, it's all rotten and full of bugs. What a letdown. <laughs> Our morale is actually getting low. And our food is actually low as well. We need food. The group is driving down a long stretch of road. No threats on the horizon, but not much else of anything either. Unexpectedly, we find some people to trade with. Another fire sale? No. Oh. How's this? This guy's got a bazooka. The group meets a man holding a bazooka and a satchel overstuffed with beeping mines. He looks so happy with his explosives. These weapons will not let you down unless, of course, you blow yourself up with them. Okay. We cannot afford to spend food. Group meets a woman who is covered in hammers. They hang from several tool belts and bandoliers. Can I tell you a secret? I love blood weapons. I'll sell you my spare parts cheap. <laughs> and Heron tells the blunt master to cool it. Her mellow mood is ruined. She starts throwing hammers in a blind rage. The group is forced to flee from the training camp. <laughs> and Herod. And Herod, please. The group runs into a horde too thick to drive past and gets cornered. They run for a good place to fight a siege, but nearby buildings all look ruined. They are in a bad spot to fight. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. And Herod, why are you breaking all your stuff? Here, have your freaking mop again. Uh, does Aunt, what does Aunt Herod have that's making her break all her stuff? I don't know. Okay. Here we go. She says chaos. <laughs> okay, we need to get not cornered. There is a very high likelihood we die here. There's no house. I have one Molotov, which is basically all we've got going for us right now. Uh, kill. Okay. Our strategy is going to heavily rely on luring the horde kind of like up. And then running around. Okay. I think we're doing good. And Herod is kicking ass with that gun. Okay, we're gonna be fine. Timer's almost out. And Herod, what did you break? Did you break the gun? The siege is over. Run away! If she broke the shotgun somehow, I'm gonna be impressed. Uh, the group feels inspired after managing to survive. What do we want to do? Okay, I think we need to take the morale, because we're all kind of ho-hum. So I'm doing executive decision. As, as much as Moss needs to get swole for no reason, we are getting the morale. Every day is a great teacher, as long as you don't get eaten. Alright, there's our morale. Gil's strength goes up. Weasel's medical goes up. And Herod's medical goes up. Moss's mechanical goes up. Get a Zombo point. The group finds a cabin in the woods with no zombies in sight. It has a wood stove, but no wood. Does someone want to go out and chop wood? Gil can now beat that moose for sure? Yes. Gil is now a moose, moose machine. Murder trees? Who should go out and chop wood? It's really hard work. Alright, so fitness-wise... 
We don't know anyone's fitness. We know that Gil has high strength, but we don't know what his fitness is. Judging by the fact that he's getting tired often, that's a fitness thing. So I would say either Anne Herod, because she's breaking everything, or... Because Moss getting tired as well. These two get tired, so their fitness is probably low. So I, I would personally say Weasel or Inherit. All right, Inherit. Inherit chops a bunch of wood and gets the wood stove going before passing out from exhaustion. She will be very tired tomorrow. Her strength increases. The fire feels great. Our morale goes up. Good job, Inherit. You're tired. We need food badly. We have one. Hey, it's Garfield. He's eating a candy bar. Well, sorry, Garfield. We're full. <laughs> when driving on the death road, the group decides to make a stop for supplies. We can drive more for free without spending any gas. Grocery store can have food. Petra saying grocery. Groceries. Group watches as another survivor retreats into a big grocery store. The survivor is pursued by a large, angry horde. Okay. Anne Herod, please. I'm not giving you. I'm not giving you this umbrella. I'm sorry. Actually, you know what? You know what? You're tired. Just sleep in the car. We'll find you something else to break. Chaos, chaos can rest for now, okay? Alright. Uh. We need to get to the grocery store, apparently. These zombies are aggressive. Should we pick up a butter knife for Aunt Herod? Okay. Getting a little... Getting a little worried. Maybe Aunt Herod was the meat holding us. There we go. We got a kitchen knife for Aunt Herod. What's in the toilet? Oh my god. Okay, Weasel got injured. Guys, our last stand may be in this toilet. Without, without Ed Herod to save us. <laughs> no, the thing snapped. And Herod, you're haunting me from beyond. Please don't run away. Okay. Okay. Ah! I don't... Guys, guys, guys! Oh no! Weasel! No! Ahem. Well. <laughs> well. This is, uh, this is the Ed Herod story now. And Herod is poking through an abandoned house and finds a Ouija board TM on the kitchen table. It's a common game used to communicate with ghosts. These things are rumored to be incredibly cursed with bad luck, so beware. Still, it may be worth asking it a question. Leave this nonsense alone. Am I pretty? Will I make it to Canada? Or where's the loot? Pretty? <laughs> All right, the vote is for pretty, although, and Herod can override it. And Herod is on her solo tour. I will let Anne Herod override. And Herod saying pretty, we're doing pretty. Pretty it is. The Ouija board spells out that Anne Herod is very pretty. Nice, and Herod doesn't feel cursed at all by this delightful Ouija. Your morale increases. Somewhere in the distance, a goblin laughs, but in a nice way, as if to say, Hey, what's up? Have a nice day. Nice. Remember fun? I remember fun. Man, I miss fun. 
It's nearly time to camp, but there's been a lot of signs of bandits today. Someone needs to be awake in case of an attack. Who should stay up and watch? And Herod by herself? Or keep driving? Coop Supercar! And Herod refuses to camp in a dangerous area and spends a tense, sleepless night driving through the dark. Ooh, double morale hit. The car veers off the road and crashes into a tree. And Herod, please. Okay, we're good. Oh, it's smoking. It's smoking and you're tired. While driving on the death road and Herod decides to make a stop for supplies. Oh, d wait, hold on. This car doesn't take gas. This vehicle consumes no gas. All right, what's the plan? Drive, there is no food place? All right. And Herod decides to burn some gas in hopes of finding interesting places. She finds new locations. Cabin with car, gym apartment, busy hotel, or pass them by. Place your votes. Hotel. And Herod spots a hotel while traveling through a ransacked town. It looks like a group of people tried to barricade it, but were interrupted. Oh, sorry, Aunt Herod. I'll, I'll wait for Aunt Herod for future decisions. Uh, to oh, Just because she's solo right now. Uh, all that's left are undead. Moderate, sluggish, near noon. Okay, so they're not crazy active. I mean, I don't trust you with anything, but umbrella, I guess. Shotgun for emergency purposes. Uh, hunting rifle. Uh, okay. Let's go, Team and Herod. We got our of the whale, dude. What's there's so many guns here. Hiya. Okay, med kit. We found one food. Now, to be honest, the fact that there's less people means we're eating less food, which is nice. What is this? A spice rack? Yeah. Oh. Team in here, Ed. Bounce your way to freedom. We got what do we got? We got some food, ammo, ammo. Yeah. And Herod, please. I I don't want to have to use the shotgun. And Herod. So the shotguns make noise, and that attracts people. So we really want to avoid using that. Is there ever a random chance for dead people to come back? Uh, don't know. I do not know what all the different things in this game are. No, no! I shouldn't have done that. No! Okay. And Herod, zombie gunner. Food. Hey, look, Aunt Herod, a mop. Skeleton. Dresser. And Herod is reckless. All right. I think that's all we got. Nope. Okay. Let's go. Let's... How do I escape? No! Not here! No! No! Okay. Uh, this seems bad. 
No, no, no! Weapon! Weapon! Change! And Hera died the way she lived. In a broom closet. Fs in chat. 